Uh, welcome to lecture 19. <clears throat> Our main topic for this lecture will be proms, but uh, first I want to look at uh, the in-class question from lecture 19. So this is question 17.3. Uh, we had uh, two, as you, as you can see here, we had two uh, two to one multiplexers. There we are. Uh, this two to one multiplexer and this one. And uh, the select lines had the signals X and Y. And the input on this multiplexer is uh, I0 and I1. Here we have I2. And we have the output Z. And in the last problem on the, the test, you were asked to identify all of the choices and here were your four choices you were asked to identify all of them that correctly express the output Z in terms of these uh, inputs X, Y, I0, I1, and I2 <clears throat> and since a number of people had a question about this I thought I would go ahead and um, uh, go over this question so the way that I would proceed in trying to do this uh, question is as follows, and it's actually pretty simple, I believe. Uh, I would first start with the following observations. When x equals 0 and y equals 0, okay, what would the output be in that case? Well, since x is equal to 0, that means that the output here will be whatever is coming in to this top input line uh, for this second multiplexer. So our job is to find out what's coming in here. Well, if y is equal to 0, then the top input here will be coming out as its output. And so that says that when x and y are both 0, z will be equal to i0 y equals 0 will make i sub 0 go from here to this output and then x equals 0 will make i 0 go from there to here <clears throat> so z is equal to i naught or i 0 in that case now what about when um, x actually I could go over here when x equals 0 and y is equal to 1. Well, in this case, since x is 0, we still uh, will be looking at this top input line. <coughs> but now, since y is equal to 1, we're going to look at the bottom input line on this multiplexer. So, uh, in other words, we're saying that since y is equal to 1, i1 will be selected and will go to this uh, output line this is the output line for the first multiplexer, but it's an input line for the second multiplexer. And uh, then since x is equal to 0, that input will be chosen to go to z. So, in other words, we conclude that when x is 0 and y is 1, z is equal to i1. Now we have two more cases to do. And that's when x is 1 and y is 0, or when x is 1 and y is 1. And we want to identify the output in each of those cases. And we can see uh, by looking at this uh, second multiplexer here that when x is equal to 1, it chooses this input line and therefore we really don't care what's on the top input line so it doesn't matter what y is equal to when x is equal to 1 <coughs> in this case z will always be equal to i2 so we have i2 for both of these cases and now <coughs> if you uh, test 
each one of these expressions here, A, B, C, and D, if you test each one of them and make and uh, to see which ones of them satisfy all four conditions, all four of those conditions must be satisfied. You will see that expression A satisfies all four of them, and expression D also satisfies all four of them. Furthermore, I hope that you can easily see that expressions A and D are really equal to each other, because you can see, of course, that the first term in A is equal to the first term in D, the second term in A is equal to the second term in D, and the third and fourth terms in A, when they are ORed together, will give you this last term in D. And the way to see that is you could here uh, notice that in this expression, you could factor out XI2, and so this would be equal to XI2 <coughs> ended with Y or Y prime, but y or y prime is 1, and so this is x i2 ended with 1, which means it's x i2. So uh, both of these expressions work. However, let's make sure that you understand why the expressions in b and c don't work. Well, if we look at the expression in b for a moment, we see that when x equals 1 and y equals 1 this is 0 and likewise for C when x equals 1 and y equals 0 this is 0 But according to our information over here, these conditions that must be satisfied, if we look at uh, x equals 1 and y equals 1, we should be getting i2 uh, in that case, not 0. And likewise here, when x is 1 and y is 0, again, we should be getting i2, but we don't, we get 0. So uh, <clears throat> b and c are incorrect. They are not always uh, they, they don't always give the correct value for the output they do in some cases uh, but not in all four of these cases but we want uh, an expression that is always correct and therefore that's why the uh, correct answer to question 17.3 uh, is uh, a and d so f that finishes that discussion and now we start with the discussion for today, which is proms. So here we see an example of a prom. And uh, I want to talk about this in some detail to make sure we understand what's going on. We have the three input lines, X0, X1, and X2. And we have two outputs in this case, F0 and F1. However, we could have more outputs than that. Um, it's not limited. The number of possible outputs is not limited by the number of inputs here. Um, at this top, well, first of all, let me explain that this notation here that we're using is called PLD notation. It's a little bit different from what I think you might have encountered in your lab, <clears throat> but what it means is the following. The variable x0 is available along this top line, and x0 prime is available along this line. Likewise, this would be x1 and x1 prime, x2 and x2 prime. Now these solid uh, colored in circles that you see denote permanent connections that have been made. 
and so we have a permanent connection here and here. Notice that on the top line actually uh, we switch, uh, oh, excuse me, I should say for the top variable, <coughs> the x naught variable, uh, we alternate between the bottom line and the top line. So we go bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top. Uh, for the uh, next variable, x1, we'll have two on the bottom, two on the top, two on the bottom, two on the top. And finally, for this last variable, x2, we'll have four on the bottom and four on the top. Now, the reason for this is that we're thinking of these two functions that we're generating here. Uh, we're thinking of uh, both of those as being functions of the input variables in the order x2, x1, x0. Now, if that is true, <coughs> then we see the following. Uh, first of all, I need to tell you one more thing. These AND gates here will AND together anything uh, that uh, they see with the solid circle. So if you see this AND gate, it will AND together x2 prime, x1 prime, and x0 prime. Okay, we'll have, I'll just write uh, x2 prime And uh, let's come over here to the last one, perhaps. It's a little crowded for me to write uh, down each one of these, but I think you'll get the point very quickly. Uh, the last one ends together x2, x1, and x0. Now, if we consider the variables uh, to be uh, in this order, x2, x1, and x0, then we can identify this as the min term M0. So M0 is what's coming out there. And likewise, this would be M1, M2, M3, M4, M5, M6, and M7. <clears throat> so basically, this top part can be thought of as a decoder. And now the bottom part of this is programmable. What, what happens is that we are allowed to make connections in order to realize the functions that we want. And so, in this case, uh, if we want F0 to be the sum of the min terms 1, 3, and 6. And notice that this is a OR gate here. So we just have to make a connection here at M1, another one at M3, and another one at M6. And the, notice that since these are not permanent connections, we will put an X rather than a solid 0. In other words, the idea is that uh, these connections could be uh, uh, perhaps a reset at some point in the future. Now, under ordinary conditions, they, they stay as they are. Once we've established the connections, they stay there, but it is possible that at some point in the future, uh, we could perhaps change them. And likewise, for F1, if we want that to be the sum of them in terms 2, 5, and 7, then we just come down here and make a connection here. That's 2 and 5 seven and that's it that's how the prom works it's just that simple and so uh, now we can look at an example okay so let's look at this example and uh, this is a little tricky so pay close attention but if you understand this example I think that you understand uh, the proms so here we have a prom with three input lines x0, x1, and x2, and five output lines f0, 
F1, F2, F3, and F4. And the instructions say in the circuit below, X is equal to X2, X1, X0. Now what that means is that X is a 3-bit binary number. X2 is the leftmost bit. And then X1 and X0 is the rightmost bit of X. And F of X is equal to F4, F3, F2, F1, F0. So F of X is also a binary number. It, uh, however, is a 5-bit binary number. And the leftmost bit is F4. The rightmost bit is F0. And we're told that this prom that is shown here in this picture is a realization of a lookup table for an arithmetic expression. And this arithmetic expression is f of x equals ax plus b. So this is a lookup table for a simple linear function of x. Uh, linear, by linear, I mean that a here is a constant and b is a constant. And this is just a lookup table. In other words, uh, the idea is that if, if you had to maybe repeatedly calculate the value of ax plus b, for uh, different values of x, then instead of always calculating it, you could just look at this table and it would give you the values of that uh, expression for certain values of x. Now in this case, since we have three input lines for uh, this problem and we're interpreting x as being the binary number uh, with the bits x2, x1, and x0, we see that uh, <clears throat> the only possible values of x that we can check here are 0 through 7 because those are the only numbers that we can express as 3-bit binary numbers. So this table, you know, this is just an, uh, an example. It's not very practical because it, it only allows us to look up uh, the value of this arithmetic expression for eight different values of x. But still, uh, it does give us an idea of um, how a prom might be used. So uh, this is the setup of the problem that we have and uh, we see uh, the usual kind of permanent connections made up here in the upper part of the prom and we see the uh, connections that have been used in this. This is the particular part you might say of the problem. This is the part that the, the user would set and so these are the connections that have been made down here and the question is to figure out what arithmetic expression are we really trying to realize with this prompt in other words what are the values of the constants a and b uh, and your uh, questions for this lecture are going to be uh, for a very similar problem so pay close attention to how we go about doing this. Now, there might be different ways to do this, but I'll show you what I think is uh, the most straightforward approach. And that is simply to make a table that will show the value of f of x for each value of x. And then once you have that, you can determine what a and b are. Now, we already know, let's see, that there are eight values of x. That is uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And if we think of this as the three bits, of course, that's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. And uh, now we need to figure out what f of x is for each one of those cases. And again, that's going to be a 5-bit binary number. Okay, so let's look at x equals 0, 0, 0. Well, if x is equal to 0, 0, 0, uh, each one of these lines uh, coming down to an AND gate 
when we when we and together the signals we're going to get zero in every case except on this very first one because notice that here we have x naught prime x1 prime and x2 prime but but let's think about it in the order x2 since x is uh, in the order x2 x1 x naught let's read from bottom up so this is x2 prime x1 prime x naught prime and so if each one of those if if x2 x1 and x naught are all equal to zero then this will be zero prime which is one ended with one ended with one and so we'll get a one here on this line this AND gate will output a one but all of the other AND gates you can check all the others will output a zero so uh, we have a one here on this first line and we'll have a zero on all of the other lines and therefore when we put in 0, 0, 0 for x2, x1, and x0, what we will see uh, for uh, the f output is since f4 doesn't have a connection on this first line, it will be 0. Since f3 does not have a connection on this first line, it will be 0. Since f2 does not have a connection on this first line, it will be 0. But we see that f1 and f0 do have connections on this first line. So both of them will be equal to 1. And therefore, our output will be 0. Remember, F, F4 here, as we say, F4 is the leftmost bit, and F0 is the rightmost bit. And again, F4, F3, and F2, they don't have connections on this first line. So they would be all three be 0, and then 1, 1. Now let me do uh, one more case. Uh, before seeing if you can finish this. So now for the next case, when x2 is 0, again remember, x2 is the leftmost bit of x, and x0 is the rightmost bit. So when x2 is 0, and x1 is 0, and x0 is 1, which one of these lines up here, which one of these vertical lines, will have, uh, when it's ended together, will yield a 1? Well, the answer in this case is this time it will be this line because if x2 is equal to 0 this x2 prime will be 1 when x1 is equal to 0 x1 prime is 1 and x0 is equal to 1 so we have 1 ended with 1 ended with 1 so we'll have a 1 here this time on this line and um, we see that f4 has no connection so it will be 0 f3 will be 0 F2 will be 1, F1 will be 0, F0 will be 1. So let's put that 0 for F4, 0 for F3, 1 for F2, 0 for F1, and 0 for F0. Now, <clears throat> uh, I think that you probably are already picking up on the pattern here. We're just moving from left to right. Uh, with these numbers, with the different numbers for x, uh, you can see the next one. Let's just maybe do one more quickly. 0, 1, 0. So 0 prime will be 1, <coughs> and then 1 and 0 prime. So the next time we'll get the third line. And you can see in that case, uh, f4 and f3 are 0, but f2, f1, and f0 are 1. So we have 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. And if we continue uh, to go through this, uh, the next one will be, looking here, the next one time uh, when we have an input <coughs> of 0, 1, 1, then uh, in that case, this line will have a value of 1. So we have uh, 0 for F4, 1 for F3, 0 for F2, 0 for F1, and 1 for F0. The next time this line will be equal to 1, and so we have 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and uh, now we go to this line, and we have 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. 
next to this line, which is 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. And then finally, when <coughs> x2 and x1 and x0 are all equal to 1, this last line, when, when they're ended together, this last line will be 1. And so f4 will be 1, f3, f2, and f1 will be 0, and f0 will be 1. So we have 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And uh, that summarizes how the problem will work. And now we need to identify what each of those uh, numbers, uh, what each of those binary numbers is equal to. And that's easy. The first one, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, of course, is 3. The next one is 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, and 17. <coughs> so we see that, uh, to summarize this, when x is 0, <coughs> our output would be 3. When x is 1, our output would be 5. 2 will give us a 7. 3 will give us a 9. 4 will give us 11. 5 will give us 13. 6 will give us 15. And 7 will give us 17. And now, all that remains is to find out the values of a and b. Well, this is very simple because uh, notice that this first line, if we plug in 3 for f of x and 0 for x uh, into this equation f of x equals ax plus b, so we would get 3 is equal to a times 0 plus b, but of course a times 0 is 0, and so we just get b and we've, we've already found b. Excuse me. This should be. Whoa. I'm sorry about this. I'm having some trouble with this pen. Either that or I'm intoxicated, and I promise you I'm, I'm not intoxicated. It might be Mardi Gras, but I'm not intoxicated. So let's try this. So this pen is really having some trouble now. Okay. So this is B. 3 is equal to a times 0 plus b, and of course, uh, a times 0 plus b is just b. So 3 is equal to b, and we've already uh, identified the value of b. Now we go to the next one, and again, and, and in fact, in every case, we will use this equation over and over that f of x is equal to ax plus b. So in the second case, f of x is equal to 5, so we have 5 is equal to a times 1, plus b, but we've already found that b is 3, so I'll substitute that in for b. We get 3, and of course, um, that's a, a times 1 is a plus 3, and if a plus 3 is equal to 5, then that says a is equal to 2, and we're already done with this problem. We conclude a is equal to 2, and b is equal to 3. And now, for the rest of them, we can just check and see if it's correct. So, the next one says that f is 7 when x is 2. Does that agree with, the imp with our uh, assumption that a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 3? Well, 2x plus 3 when x is equal to 2, 2 times 2 would be 4 plus 3 is 7, so that works. 2x plus 3 when x is equal to 3, that would be 2 times 3 is 6, plus 3 is 9, so this works. 2x plus 3 when x is equal to 4 will give 11, 
2x plus 3 when x is equal to 5 would give 13. 2x plus 3 when x is equal to 6 would give 15. And 2x plus 3 when x is equal to 7 is 17. So indeed, we conclude that um, the, air, the values of the constants in the arithmetic expression in this case would be a equals 2 and b equals 3. So that uh, is all that I want to try to do for this lecture. And now we'll come up with some questions uh, on a very similar kind of problem. So here are the problems for this lecture. Uh, we have three problems, 19.1 to 19.3. And as usual, 19.3 will be given, the third one, 19.3 in this case, will be given in class. But 19.1 and 19.2 are shown here. And uh, as, it's, as the uh, directions say, uh, these problems or these questions concern this following problem. In this circuit, uh, X is a binary number, just as it was in our example problem. Uh, it's a three bit binary number with the leftmost bit X2, the next bit is X1, the next bit is X0 f of x <clears throat> as before is a 5 bit binary number with the leftmost bit f4 and the rightmost bit f0 the problem realizes a lookup table for the arithmetic expression here is where we have our uh, main difference is in this case we have uh, not a linear function of x but a quadratic function of x so it's rx squared plus sx plus t and um, I'm, you're given this circuit shown here with uh, these, the, the permanent connections up above are all as usual. Uh, but in this case, you can see the uh, temporary connections that have been made. And by the way, it is no mistake here that this one has zero connections. Okay, that's not a mistake. And so uh, you need to find out, for 19.1, you need to find out the value of R. For 19.2, you need to find the value of S. And then 19.3 will be given in class. And in 19.1, uh, the choices are A is 2, B is negative 8, C is 1, D is 3. And actually, you have those same four choices for 19.2. And so uh, that concludes lecture 19 and uh, good luck.